most of the US population is uh, suffering from chronic disease. And we look at the ADD, ADHD, we're looking at the autism, we're looking at the uh, depression, anxiety, we're looking at cancer, we're looking at diabetes, we're looking at hypertension, high cholesterol. Of course, all these issues with the uh, you know, um, gut issues and IBS, all the inflammatory conditions, uh, arthritis, cancer, uh, uh, HIV, AIDS. So all these things we're looking at, they are like chronic disease. People once get uh, sick and they are there for a long period of time. And considering that, we are seeing that the trend is that 70% of US population have, or adult population have at least one chronic disease, whereas 45% have at least two chronic disease, disease or more. So when individual have one chronic condition and they start taking drugs and you know, of course the, the medication treatment, um, that also sometime will help, but also will have side effect. Um, many of the chronic conditions require immunosuppressant, which will suppress the immune system even further. So in the first place, when we become sick, is because the immune system was compromised. On top of that, when we take the drugs, which are very harsh sometimes, and they're important, but on the side, they also require to boost the immune system, which is done, not done most of the time, then their side effects will make the person even more weak, more fragile. And with that, the more conditions will come. So we're seeing that from one chronic disease, they will have two, three, four, and it keeps adding and comes to a point then one you know, person is going to doctor office to doctor office uh, almost every week. So when we look at the Ayurvedic medicine, we find that boosting immunity is the goal or should be the goal for each individual if they want to stay healthy and they want to stay healthy for a long period of time. And especially when we look at the midlife crisis, people in mid 40s start getting sick and high cholesterol and hypertension becomes kind of a fashion. And that's the time we should be taking care of ourselves so that we make sure we are not getting sick as we get older. The golden years of life we are finding in the West actually are not that golden. Everybody is sick. Uh, where the time should be, you are done with the responsibility and enjoy life and be healthy. That is not the case. We are seeing more and more and more elderly population, which is sick. So I think one time we should be talking about what should be done for elderly because that is the population which is hurting the most. It doesn't matter if it's infectious disease or it is the, or it is the chronic disease. Uh, so in both cases, that population uh, get uh, uh, hurt or, or affected the most. So when you're looking at the overall infectious disease, its function is to prevent and limit infection and that we know that already. Immune system can differentiate between normal healthy cells and unhealthy cells. Autoimmune and inflammatory disease are associated with the dysregulated uh, basically system inside that in the body, we know that. So our goal would be to see how, it how will we boost immune system. The number one thing we are trying to find out the, the what will make the immune system. So we have many systems in the body. Again, most of that comes to be the endocrine system, the digestive system, which is most of most important. So we are going to spend a little more time on the digestive system. So the immunity comes from good food when it is absorbed properly. And that absorption process of that will require a digestive tract from mouth to anus, the entire alimentary canal. And that system actually is the one which is, which should be taken care of. And it is uh, the system which actually ignores most of the time when there is issue with the gut or with the direction, indirection, that's where we say, well, no, it's not that bad. I just have some you know, inflammation or maybe gas or maybe bloating. And when it comes to other systems, which you call the vital organs, when somebody can't breathe or somebody can't think, something happening with the, with the brain, or they feel like the, the heart is acting up or there's a skip beat, uh, they, will get, they will get concerned and they will find or they will seek uh, medical care. But when it comes to gut, uh, we are not paying that attention. Even though we know that the entire body, organ system, uh, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidney, all of them are getting their nutrients from what is being absorbed by the digestive tract. So that is of the most importance here. So looking at that, we need to be looking at the, the microbiomes. If my body has one of good bacteria and those good bacteria are the one which will dictate how healthy we are.
if those are healthy then of course the the body will be healthy we do have about almost 75 trillion bacteria in our large intestine but even when we look at this diverse basically diverse population we should also look at what makes the that is to track uh, a good place for them to to grow so basically for that we need to have good prebiotics uh, we need to have good fiber we want to make sure the mucous membrane is intact so um, all those things are are playing a good, good important role not too hot not too cold so in looking at the immune system overuse of antibiotics dietary changes causes the lack of the of this basically uh, this the um, this cause problem with the, in, the immune system or cause problem with the digestive tract and with that the autoimmune conditions and inflammatory dis dis disorders come and we see that every chronic condition starts with some kind of inflammation and the inflammatory disease is becoming a big issue. Um, the diet or the food we are getting is, is of most importance here, reason being that most of us are getting food which are processed or coming from sources which we are not aware of, uh, especially when we eat out at the, the chain stores which, uh, we, which are not getting any local food. And so those preservatives in the food will cause more, many, many problems. When you're looking at the interdependence of diet, immune, and the microbiota, we're looking at this triangle, where we're looking at the diet itself and the microbiota or, or, or the bacteria and the immunity. And so the diet and the good amount of microbiomes will both will influence how strong our immune system is. And of course, we knew they need to have other nutrients vitamin A, fat, iron, sugar, fiber, which will help in the fermentation. And then we're looking at the vitamin A, D, and all these things. Basically, what the point is that if our diet is good, that is the first point. Second is if our, if our absorption is good. But for absorption, we have to make sure that the microbiomes or bacteria are good, plus the internal atmosphere of the body, whereas looking at the temperature should be good. So we look at the healthy normal temperature, 98.6. In general, what we consider between 98.2 to 98.6 is kind of average. And with that, with, that is the environment we need for the proper growth of the bacteria. If the temperature drops too low, too high, that becomes an issue. And when the temperature is low for a long period of time, then the bacteria will move from large intestine to small intestine. And we basically call it SIBO, small intestine, bacterial lower growth, inflammatory bowel disease. All these things come when the bacteria move from the proper place to improper place. And that happens when our body temperature is low. So we need to be making sure that our temperature is good. And that actually brings us to a good important, good point, which is actually the, uh, is coming from Ayurveda that Agni or the metabolic fire or metabolic energy is extremely important. And as long as our metabolic energy is good, we are able to break down the food particles, all the enzymes, the rest of the enzymes that are released properly. And we are able to uh, digest our food and also excrete or also excrete the food, basically fecal matter on time. And also uh, the based on the heat, the transformation of energy from one form of the food to the next will be done properly. And we'll, we'll, we'll go over that part also when we're looking at the transformation. So heat or agni in Ayurveda is considered as the energy of transformation, which helps transform or, trans, or, or, or change the food from one form to the next one. And that is what happens inside the body as the food is moving from the mouth us so basically we chew the food, the mixing with the saliva properly, and chewing properly is basically what I would say is we should chew the food equal to the number of teeth we have. So if we have roughly 32 teeth, make sure we chew it 32 times. So, so chewing makes a very important process as we chew that properly, we're mixing with saliva, so the chime is made, the paste is made, and based on that, the next phase of absorption where we are mixing that with the uh, acid uh, produced by the lining of the stomach that comes. And then based on that, the, the base or the um, bile is produced or released from the gallbladder, which is formed by the liver. 
so all this process is to so any process which is happening at this time is dependent upon the previous mixture or previous chemical reaction inside the gut so they are all dependent upon each other and then the amount released also depends on how good the system is how healthy the system is how intact our mucous membrane is and also if the if the if the that particular organ is releasing the enzyme on the hormones and those are released based on our agni or the heat the fire inside the body so so keeping that in mind when we look at the entire system entire body the body function agni is of most importance and also the out of all these agnis jatragni which is the agni of digestion agni of metabolism which is starting from the small so okay from the stomach to small intestine so the uh, so we are looking at these little slides also look, talking about microbiomes microbiota basically we're looking at this triangle we just saw uh, so when we're looking at different types of of microbes they will grow in our colon large intestine again the numbers is very high and the number is important because most of the time when we have low number of microbes that's where the indigestion happen and if they grow from move from large intestine to small intestine of course there is other issue there but within the large intestine the 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 number of this colony should have should be very high and any time in person have a inflammatory disease or have a chronic issue with constipation or diarrhea or we take antibiotics or we take other drugs which could be harmful we are basically destroying the microbes and also destroying the mucous membrane so mucous membrane also is very important especially at this time when we are dealing with covid-19 knowing that the virus is entering the body through the mucous membrane of the nasal passageway and also through the throat eventually embedded it in itself in the mucous membrane of the gut and also the lungs so even though like i said before lungs become a serious issue and we go to hospital but in most of the people the symptoms started from the gut and which we mostly ignore so we should be paying attention listen to our body and see what is wrong and what is going on what is body is trying to tell us so in that case we want to make sure that we take care of that immediately when it starts so the diversity of the bacteria is very important and when that is not there the this virus is starts and that cause problem and we need to make sure that that before that happens we do consume foods which have variety for example green leafy vegetables are very, very important and in probably more important than the protein and the fat we take we everybody is concerned about the amount of protein they eat but fiber is extremely important so have we, we need to have enough fiber in our diet making sure that the the before we take probiotic prebiotic is important the lining are in in, in the gut is in intact and gives a good environment for the bacteria to grow um the so basically you're looking at many many condition we're looking at all the inflammatory bowel disease basically you know crohn disease and all those are part now we are looking at uh, especially after the covid uh, one more uh, issue we are facing at this time especially for younger children is multiple organ inflammatory disease and that is actually um, is a big concern because with the after effects of the covid 19 in a young body Uh, is creating uh, inflammatory inflammation in many many organs at the same time, which becomes difficult to to handle. Uh, so any time we have those, make sure we seek uh, medical help immediately. Um, so it mentioned basically this is linked to many disease. Reason being, any time we are talking about a condition of the heart, condition for the for the brain, condition for any other part of the body, we should keep in mind all these organs. are dependent upon the digestive system if my digestion is not good the bacteria are not there properly and and also the absorption is not good other organs will not get the nutrients the need to function properly so any disease we deal with make sure we also deal with and see if my digestive system is good and that is what what is going to build the immune system because immunity depends upon how body is absorbing So it mentioned also about different bacteria. Bifidobacteria are the first bacteria to colonize the gut, and it is acquired during vaginal childbirth and breast milk. So we know most of these processes. I have talked about this before. 
if the bacteria make up, up to about 90% of an immense infant's gut microbial ecosystem and basically continues to about first three years of life. After that, this decreases to about 5%. Again, we, can, we have so much variety and the number is so high that many of them will keep damaging. But again, as long as our diet is good, the new will be growing. And so probiotic, we have become a talk for many, many years and almost everybody is taking some kind of probiotic. But also we need to make sure we can put by probiotic in the body. But if the environment is not healthy, if the gut is not healthy, this bacteria will not be able to stay there for a long period of time, will not grow. So for that, we need to make sure, again, the prebiotic is there. And simply, basically, we're coming from vegetable, fruits, nurse, whole grain. Ghee actually came because of the uh, butrate. It has basically helps grow the bacteria. So that is also very important. Or, or good homemade butter, if you can find that. So that brings us to the point uh, which we're talking about. Um, how will we boost the immune system? When we're boosting immune system, like I said before, the digestive system is the organ which absorbs all the things we take and based on that, the entire body is, is getting the nutrients. But inside the digestive tract, the agni, the heat, the fire, the element of transformation is very, very important. And everything depends on that. So when you're looking at the fire element, Basically, that is one of the five elements in the body. So what Ayurveda believes, everything is in the universe is made of five great elements. The space, air, fire, water, and earth. And so basically, when we're looking at those, uh, we come up with the three doshas or three body type. The first one will be the vat dosha. So vat dosha comes from the combination of space and air. Uh, then the pit dosha, pit comes from the combination of the fire and water, and the kaf dosha comes with the combination of water and fire, uh, water and earth. So water and earth makes the basically a mud, a combination for structural material. So that makes our our structure basically bones, ligaments, tissue, fat, what will look like. The pit combination of fire and water, two strongest sources of energy that controls metabolism, that controls our hormones, that controls our endocrine system completely. So that actually controls our life in general. And then we look at the first one, space and air, because they make what? So what control because of air, all the movement, movement externally, joint health, the way we walk, the way we blink our eyes, the way we speak, all these, whatever you see outside moving is coming from the external. Internal basically would be circulation, circulation of blood, circulation of lymph, uh, motor and sensory pathways, so brain, nervous system, anxiety, depression, they are part of that. Also movement of food, gas exchange in the lungs and also in the, at the cellular level, uh, filtration process in the kidney. So all of that actually is controlled by the Vata Dosha. So considering that, we want to make sure that whatever our prakriti, whatever our body constitution is at the time of birth, we maintain that. We do not let it go out of balance, which becomes prakriti, vikriti. So we don't want to have a vikriti, but just maintain the prakriti. The original, basically, factory setup should be there and try to be as close to that as possible by eating well based on your body type. So when we're looking at the, the uh, dosh or body type or body constitution, that becomes our responsibility to maintain how that, that point and make sure we choose food which are good for our body type, good for dosha, for example. If somebody is kapha dosha, which has more um, basically fat, heavy, slow, uh, sluggish, cold, uh, then that individual should not consume any cooling food. So not the ice creams and not the cold food, whereas warming food will be helpful. So basically keeping that in mind, we choose the food based on whatever dosha is. So the Agni element in this case governs digestion, absorption, assimilation, and transformation of food, and also the energy. So basically, optimum Agni keep the immune system healthy, and that becomes the key. Absolutely nothing cold. If you need something cold, room temperature. Considering our body is 98.6 degrees, or should be 98.6 degrees, 70 degree room temperature, food or water is cold enough. When we take something from freezer, zero degree, that draws heat from us. And that is the first point where our immune system gets started and compromising because 
the metabolic energy, the heat is not there. And if we keep consuming that on a daily basis, and also uh, basically you know, cold food, cold drink, and the stress will also uh, suppress our immune system. And even though stress has become a part of Western lifestyle because all, of, all the time, again, all over the world, not only here, all over the world, stress is there. Somehow our lifestyle has become such that we uh, basically are busy uh, most of the time acquiring things for uh, this life, wherever in this acquisition of stuff, the life got ignored itself. And then we have all the stuff. Only thing we don't have is a good health to enjoy it. And so that is the point we need to keep in mind as long as the body is healthy, the life is healthy, life is happy, everything will come with the healthy body. Other things are, are not that important. So in, in Ayurveda, we're looking at the Tejas, Ojas and Prana, the three concepts. Tejas is basically the heat again. Ojas is the, the ability to fight, is the energy, which is what we call the immune system. And Prana is the life force, which is the oxygen. So Tejas include Agni and light is the primary energy involved in digestion, transformation of everything we eat, drink, do, think, and feel. So even at the mental level, when we are, when we are doing something, as we are going through the decision-making process, how we handle stress, that makes a big, big, big change. So if we are able to handle stress properly, then it is basically we, we can come to a solution without being stressed. But when we are weak because of our metabolic heat, the tage is not there, then we just keep worrying, 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 and that will suppress our immune system even more. So the ability to handle stress makes a big, big, you know, is very, very important. That's where the meditation, that's where the deep breathing, that's where um, exercise, walking in the morning comes because we want to absorb as much as prana, the life force, as we can because oxygen is the key here for the brain function and for many of the important function in the body. So that's why it's called prana, the life force. Tejas is the energy pressing biological intelligence to us. So expressing biological intelligence this is very important. Ojas is a subtle substance expressing vital protective energy. So, and prana is the life force. So when looking at the ojas, we have seven dhatus in the body, seven tissues in the body. So what I would say is that whatever we consume, that will be converted after the fecal matter and the urine and all the excretion is done. The extract of the, of the food we take is going to nourish our body fluid. So body fluids becomes the first layer of the tissues we call dhatu. The dependent, depending upon our metabolic energy or the heat or agni, the, ex, the, the extraction of that nutrient will be much more or less. If our metabolic fire or energy is proper and, and optimum, then of course we will be able to extract most of it. And based on the metabolic energy of that first dhatu, rasa, the blood, the extract of that will nourish our blood. Based on the agony of the blood, the extract of the blood will nourish the body muscles or tissues based on the agony and energy of that point or, 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 the, or the muscle, the extract of that will nourish the body fat. And then so on, the extract of the body fat will nourish the bone, extract the bone, will nourish the bone marrow, and also the extract for the bone marrow will nourish the, the ovum or the sperm. And then that also have extract, which we call oja. So each dhatu or each layer, the body fluids, blood, muscles or tissue, fat, bone, bone marrow, or in the, or in, and the genetic material, all of them will have their own oj, which means, which means there are ojas of each dhatu, and that is the protective energy of each dhatu. But also at the end, we will have extract of the entire system, and that becomes the optimum or central ojas, which is the immunity, which we consider as the protective energy and the, and, the, and, 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 and the immunity, which is going to give us the ability to fight against any foreign particle or any organism or any disease. So Ojas is the essence related to vitality and immunity, fights against aging, 
decay and disease, of course, we know that, formed during biosynthesis of bodily tissues. All dhatus has the capacity to create its own ojas, which we talked before. And when we look at each dhatu, that will be localized. And also, if you look at the collective, that becomes the pure essence of all dhatus, and that is the immunity we need. So, what Ayurveda says that when we are looking at each dhatu and extract of that, but we keep going back from the ovum and sperms to the, the uh, bone marrow, bone marrow to bone, bone to fat, fat to tissues or, or muscle and muscles to blood and blood to uh, the, the body fluid, it all comes back to the food. So the quality amount of the food makes a big, big importance. The food, we always talk about finding locally grown food because when you're looking at the five elements, the space, air, fire, water, and earth, whatever I'm living in, whatever I'm enjoying, the food grown in the same environment is going to nourish me better because that will recognize my body and my body will recognize the food better because we are sharing many of the elements on daily basis. The air is the same, water is the same. So keeping that in mind, what I would say is if you find locally grown food, that will be extremely important. Second, the food has to be cooked because we need heat inside the body. And if we are consuming cold food and also uh, not properly cooked raw food, then the food will not be absorbed completely. So only raw foods, which could be allowed now because of technology, we see that when you put that in a blender and then we have a smoothie, so that food is completely chewed. And so that probably is absorbable but only when we take that also sip by sip, because like I said before, the amount of, of saliva mixed with the food, and based on that, the release and mixture of the, of the acid in the stomach, and based on that, the release and mix of the bile, and based on that, the pancreatic enzymes, all these are dependent upon the previous one. If we just take a glass of the smoothie and just basically swallow immediately, then we are bypassing all the, all the benefits of the saliva. So even though whatever you're taking, uh, then also even, even though it's basically the smoothie form and it doesn't require chewing, still take sip by sip. And also we want to make sure that food uh, is also warm because as we add heat, we are also increasing our agni. And better the agni is, better it will be absorbed. Ojas include endocrine system, nervous system, skeleton system, muscular system, hematopoietic system, and digestive system. So all these are part of it. When all these systems perform at the optimum level, ojas is maintained. Therefore, ojas is the potential source of strength, power, and resistance against illness called the natural immunity. Okay. So we look at the immune system. And then you want to know what can be done, how I am getting we sick all the time. And there are individual season changes. They will start sneezing. They will have allergies. They anytime little rain, a few drops of rain goes on, they get fever. So when you're looking at that, it means there is something missing in my body. And that something is the immunity. So basically, we need to uh, maintain that, preserve that. And if somehow that is becoming weak, we need to do anything possible to make sure we boost the immune system. Depends upon the quality of digestion, quality of liver function, also basically the, uh, the hormones, endocrine system. So we need to put our thoughts together of the, how the absorption of this is taking place. Again, these are the seven dhatus and the oja we talked about before. Rasrak, Mans, Med, Asti, Majja, Shukr. So we basically know that the process takes three to five days from one to the next one. And that depends upon our metabolic fire. If the metabolic fire or the Agni is strong, then you take three days. If it's medium, take four days. If it's slow, five days. And if someone is suffering from chronic disease, it may take more than that. And I've had individuals whose metabolism is so weak that even when they come for colonic, they have food sitting in their small intestine or large intestine for up to three months. And so 
So that is a long period of time. I've seen somebody eating something today and then is not executed the same day and they may see the pieces of carrot or peas or corn in two or three days, but not three months. And there have been individuals who had that stuck there for that long. So keeping that in mind, our metabolism had to be good and also excretion had to be good. And what the Centers for Disease Control and many other agencies which are dealing with this on daily basis, our health, finding out that the, the constipation have become such a concern that many people don't even know what constipation means. Many individuals are going once a week, think that is okay, it's normal to go once a week. And uh, somebody actually was, was telling me that, uh, when I asked that they should be going twice every day, it says basically, you know, because you eat every day. And his response was, I put um, gas in my car uh, almost every other day, but I go for oil change every three months. So why that frequent? <laughs> so that example won't work here. The reason being that I told him that the car requires a complete filter change in three months. And uh, if, if you want to have a filter change, basically new kidneys every three months, well, go for it. But again, when you keep this toxic, rotten, fecal matter in your body for that long is going to ferment. And fermentation of that will also cause severe inflammation and forget about the toxicity it has. Uh, so, so basically we need to be going twice a day. So good ball movement, which feels empty, light, twice a day is, is good. And, and so uh, if you're going once a day, but that is acceptable, but not less than that. When you're missing a day, you'd know you have constipation. So that is very important, constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, so when any time there is something happening, you should pay attention what my body is trying to tell me. And based on that, everything else is, is happening in the body. So basically looking at the seven dhatus. So that brings me to a Ayurvedic perspective. Most of my lecture, I, will, I keep mentioning this one because this is very important. A definition of health in Ayurveda, according to WHO, this is the best definition because in many uh, health field, especially also in modern medicine, or we call the allopathic medicine, the absence of disease is health. But what I would say is, no, it's not just the absence of disease. There could be many other things also. So it, calls, it says, some dosha, some agnish, some dhatu, malkriya, prasan atma, indriya, mana, swast, iti, abhidhiyate. So it came from Sushrut Samhita. So it's saying that when we have balanced dosha, which means all three dosha, vata, pitta, kaf are balanced, <coughs> when we have some agni, which means all the agnis are also balanced, all the dhatus, seven dhatu are also balanced. Malkriya is excretion. That's also balanced, which means we urinate without any problem. There is no burning. There is no um, irritation. Uh, there is no hesitancy. There is no urgency. Same thing when you're going for a ball movement. You want to make sure that we go twice a day no constipation, we're not sitting there for two hours or three hours. So when that is also healthy, prasanna means happy, atma, soul, indriya, the sense organs, then that is what, that's what call us healthy. So if my all sense organs are happy, I'm feeling happiness inside, my soul is happy, and the, the vata, pitta, the dosha or dosha are balanced, the agni is balanced, Dhatu is balanced and the excretion is also proper. That is when a person is healthy. When something changes out of these, I have a, um, my mindriya are not happy, my sense organs, which means I may be angry, I may be upset about something, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling anxious. That is unhealthy. When everything is balanced, that is health. And keeping that in mind, we need to do everything possible to balance, to bring to balance. So basically, the immunity depends upon all these factors. So optimum digestion is very important. Anytime there is a pre-existing condition, which you are finding in chronic condition or infection, that needs to be taken care of. Optimization of the diet is very important. The lifestyle, smoking, drinking, exercise, sleep, that is very important. And then supplements, Oshadi comes to the end. So in generally, when we're looking at the Ayurvedic medicine, when anybody who comes for a condition, we always ask a question about the digestive system. How is your ball movement? You know, how is your excretion? And the person probably will sometimes will say, well, it's not my gut, it is my heart, where's the problem? But well, the heart doesn't eat. So we still need to ask questions about the gut. And that is very important. But in case of immunity, many when the immune system is come, many, many conditions will 
will come up and the person will be suffering for multiple conditions. Now when look, dealing with the COVID where immune system is, most, is, is the most important, we're finding many individuals who could not make it in the hospital and who didn't survive are those who had other conditions, pre-existing condition, diabetics or were the number one, then people with high heart disease, hypertension, for example, high cholesterol, people with kidney issues. So their immune system is already low to begin with. That is why they develop the condition. On top of that, many treatments involve uh, immunosuppressant for in order for the um, medicines to work. And that is another other factor. Their immune system was, again, even lower than that. And then when they got the infection and with that, the stress, um, then basically took over the body and they couldn't survive. So basically, we want to make sure our digestive system is optimum. The reason being, even, even though if we take supplements or medicine, that need to be absorbed also. If my digestive system is not working properly and I'm not even absorbing or digesting the medicine, how that will work? How would it help me? So that is number one thing we should be looking at. It does not matter where the condition is, where the pain is, what kind of suffering uh, the person is going through. If they are heart have issue or brain have issue or lung have issue, we always with that pay attention to the gut health. And if something is already there in the person, we want to make sure uh, that we pay attention to what that condition is, what kind of medicine they're taking, sometime the side effect of the medicine and also the, uh, the medical, med different medicine have effect on each other that we also want to make sure that is not the case. Uh, sometimes we have seen people who are taking blood pressure medicine for a long period of time will cause kidney issues. So, or, so we need to pay attention to that also. And, and so in general, what Ayurvedic medicine says, the first we treat the person based on their diet, ahar we call that. So ahar is the diet. First we change the diet. If diet is good, then we can start, we have a good beginning because if I'm eating good food, the absorption of that will provide me good nutrients. If I'm eating junk food, of course, that, that's what I get. So in that case, the ahar comes first. And they are everything you, our body need actually should come from our diet. Person who is looking for magnesium to relax, well, go for beetroot. Person who is looking for vitamin A, well, get more uh, basically carrots. So all these things are there. Uh, but if they come from the plant-based diet, our body will absorb it better and will hold it for a longer period of time. If you're able, if you're taking something external sources, chemical made, then the body will get the benefit, but the liver and kidneys will have to flush it out. Not only it will not stay for a long period of time. We keep taking them for forever, uh, but on the top of that, we're adding extra work for our liver and also for the kidneys so that excretion takes extra of extra extra strength and energy. So, so first we look at the ahar, then we look at the vihar, the lifestyle. And I mentioned here basically briefly says you know, smoking, drinking. Well, somebody who is smoking, they know it's going to be harmful for their lungs. And as the lungs are not absorbing enough oxygen, the entire body will be affected. Drinking is going to affect the liver and the liver function is not optimal than what you would expect. That's we got only one liver. Exercise is important. But again, if you're, you don't have to be an athlete running a marathon, but walking around the neighborhood, even in the house outside, and go for a little jogging. Light exercise is important, and sleep is very important. Make sure we get our roughly eight hours of sleep. Again, it's not going to be eight for exact, you know, everybody. Younger will require more. As we get older, probably will be okay with less, but less than five, well, six hours for grown-up adults above 50, it's kind of less, we need that. What I would say is during sleep is, is where the repairs are done. So we're looking at the circadian rhythm and also look at the times of vata, pitta, and cup. So we're looking at you know, basically 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. is the time for cup. And then 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the time for, for pitta. And from 2 to 6 is the vata. And from 6 to 10 again is the cup. And for 10 to 2 a.m. is the pit. So during the pitta time, we do the uh, optimum metabolism and also repair. So the good meal or, 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 or the, in the immune system or the metabolism is at the peak between 
uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That is the time of pit. So basically you're saying that in generally, when you're eating lunch about 12 o'clock, at that time, because our metabolism is strong, you're going to have a good meal. But the same pit in the night, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., is going to repair and nourish. So in the night, when we are sleeping, that is where all the repairs are done. All the damage we do to this body during our daily processes or activity, that need to be repaired. So sleeping between 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is very important because if we are not sleeping, the repairs will, be not, will not be performed. And then we keep suffering more and more and more. So again, with these televisions, 24 hours, I see many, many individuals who go to bed at 2 a.m. Well, that's why you are sick because the repairs were not done. So body is able to completely take care of itself when we do some damage during the day. In the night is repaired. So and so basically when we miss that repair time, that's why we keep hurting more and more and more. What all one more thing, and then at the end we take Aushadi with the supplement. So supplement should be the last thing. One more thing I have to say is basically majority of toxins or AMA or are, are fat soluble. They go to places which have more fat. So also we need to keep in mind that only a good fat will be helpful to remove it or will be required to remove it. That's why ghee became of such an importance even in detoxification. So if you're trying to remove that with chemicals, well, that will not bind. Uh, so basically if we have toxins embedded into our body fat, we need a good fat to dissolve and make that movable. So that's how we'll be able to move that. In case of diet, so first thing is the har. The freshly cooked, locally grown food, like I said before, are very important, easy to digest. One thing we always talk in Ayurveda as the khichdi or khichdi. So khichdi diet is a combination of mung beans and, and the rice. So equal amount, cook them with onions, tomatoes, ginger, and vegetable. You can put spinach, you can put kale, you can put zucchini, um, very light uh, Himalayan salt. And so with, when you make that khichdi, is a mono diet easy to digest and with that anytime you eat khichdi make sure you put one teaspoon to a tablespoon of ghee ghee nourishes all seven dhatus nourishes the entire body a good fat which we do need and also which have the like I said, this has, this has, which has butyrate basically is helping the good bacteria to grow and so good fat is important uh, so in cooking we use ghee we use ginger Turmeric is golden herb, not because it looks golden, because it is useful for almost everything. So it is a one of the best known antibiotic, antiseptic, antihistamine, anti-inflammatory. So basically anything person have, if they take turmeric, they will not be wrong. Anytime somebody have issue with their with the circulation, cardiovascular system, taking using ginger or with the lungs, taking ginger will be very important. Not only it's a good herb to improve blood circulation, but also it is an anti-inflammatory for the upper respiratory tract. So uh, throat infection, lungs, and also for digestive system. When children are not eating well, then we, my grandma used to make them gingerbread. So gingerbread was a bread which had a lot of ginger, not with sugar uh, cookies and sprinkle a little bit of ginger on top of it. No, it had quite a lot of ginger because that will boost your metabolic heat and then you will feel hungry within like few few minutes after taking ginger also this is really good for nausea so if you're traveling and you have a piece of ginger in your mouth <clears throat> chewing that the extract of that which will calm the gut which is the nervous system in the gut so it uh, calms the neurons and the person feel calm inside and will not be feeling nauseated garlic is really good for again for circulation Ajuma seeds are extremely important for indigestion, also to boost Agni. Uh, so it's good for good metabolism, gas and bloating. Fenugreek is extremely important for individuals who have issue with the blood sugar. So diabetics, uh, that could be, again, somebody who was diagnosed diabetic or who is somebody may not be diagnosed, but they are concerned about the blood sugar level or A1C. And so now, you know, Sometimes doctor will call them pre-diabetic, but there's nothing called pre-diabetic. Either you have it or you don't have it. But if you are in moving in the wrong direction and you come in the cat category of pre-diabetic, then you know that the journey ahead is not that good. And you make sure you make a U-turn in your bad habits 
uh, and uh, try to eat healthy. But fenugreek will be a really good herb or spice to add into your cooking. You can make, you can find fenugreek leaves, which can you could cook with vegetable. You can find the seed. We can make powder and take that maybe half a teaspoon twice a day or just sprinkle in your food. Saffron is really great to boost the immune system. So in this list, ghee is good for immune system. Ginger is good for immune system. Turmeric is good for immune system. Garlic is good for immune system. Ajma seed, because they help in the digestion, that's why they are here and they're also good for immune system. Fenugreek, because it's going to help in the treatment of the Im 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 imbalance of blood sugar and helping treat the uh, diabetes that will help because diabetes is a multi-organ disease and of course will suppress immunity with when many organs are involved. You know, in this case, we are dealing with we deal when somebody is suffering from diabetes, not only it is the pancreas, but also we're looking at the liver function, we're looking at the digestive system, we're looking at the heart, we're looking at the kidney. So many organs are involved. So making sure that when that is balanced, of course, that will boost immune system. Saffron is a really good herb for boosting immune system. So circulation also for heart. So we use that in the as a part of golden milk. Every time we talk, somebody will ask questions. So golden milk is important because it has it is either you can use raw milk or you can use, use almond milk. And with that, you are boiling about in one cup, about a half teaspoon of turmeric powder, a pinch of uh, ginger powder, a pinch of black pepper, and a few four or five fibers of saffron. Uh, and then if you want to make it tasty, you may want to put a little bit of uh, ground or chopped dates and just boil that for a few minutes and just drink that sip by sip. It's really really nutritious also it has all the properties you need for boosting the immune system uh, for get, making digestion better and also circulation better so so the golden milk is becoming popular and saffron will be a good part of that that system that milk uh, the oshadi part of this one is extremely extremely important reason being at this point when many individuals are are, are suffering from the low immune system because of, again, COVID-19, or they had immune system low to begin with. That's why they are struggling. Then if you look at anti-inflammatory herbs. Guglu is a raisin from a plant. It is really good uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, Boswellia is also extremely important. No side effect of any of those. For the gut health, we use Trifloplex, which is very important, three fruits together. Uh, GI cleans if somebody have constipation. For immunity, we are using amla extract. Amla is a basically gooseberry, very rich in vitamin C. So one small fruit of amla have more vitamin C than one, but then 20 oranges so is so powerful. Gloy extract is also very very important. So we're giving two capsules of these is twice. Chavan prash is a jam in Ayurveda. We call it multivitamin, but it's also a rasayana. Rasayana is something which works as a medicine when you are sick, but also a tonic when you are not sick. So Chavan Prash should be taken by everyone all the time, every day. So in this list, Trifla is also a Rasayan, Amla is also a Rasayan, Chavan Prash is also a Rasayan. So these three are considered Rasayan because they can be consumed by everyone, younger or old. So Chavan Prash, basically people, children start taking as a, as a multivitamin as young age, and then we continue taking that for entire life because it's going to be useful for every phase of life. Again, uh, immunity plex is to boost immune system. So it's a decoction, easily absorbed, and also withania plex because individuals have a lot of stress. Withania is an adaptogen, which helps us handle the stress properly. And if our immune system is good, and if your, our brain function is good, then we are able to handle the stress properly. So this withania, because of the adaptogen, it helps our body adapt to the circumstances. With the immunity plex, we also give one more decoction called the vasa plex. And so vasa plex, vasa have the tendency to help with the lungs and the upper respiratory tracts, we combine those. So during this time of the, with the difficult time when we do need the immune system the most, we have been using Amla extract, Glow extract, Chavan Prash, Immunity Plex, and Vasaplex for, for almost everybody. And if someone has any inflammatory disease, then we suggest using Gugulu or, or Boswellia or Trifla Gugulu 
or if somebody have joint pain, then we talk about that. If somebody have hypertension, then we talk about that. But again, making sure the body is being taken care of, but also we also not be concerned about immunity only, but we need to keep in mind that if someone have a pre-existing condition, that needs to be taken care of. So with that, I'm going to stop here. Any question you have, you can ask. But the point was to make sure that we do whatever possibly we can to boost the immune system. We want to make sure that we take certain herbs on daily basis to boost the immune system and also to boost our metabolism. So in an entire lecture or in, in, the, in the journey of healing, the digestive system is of extremely importance, whereas we always talk about eating warming food. So in, the, in this process, if we take more soups, homemade soup, lentil soup, vegetable soup, and if you are using chicken, chicken soup, but again, try to find a local butcher shop where it had to be butchered the same day, not again, coming from some other part of the world. And when we are using those, make sure we put some turmeric, we use ghee, we use some cumin seed for, for digestion. If somebody has diabetes, we want to make sure we use fenugreek, um, also cinnamon. Uh, so these herbs were given to us for our betterment, so we learn how to use them properly. And if somebody wants to learn more, uh, we also offer a certification course in Ayurvedic medicine at the entry, but the, base, the three phases, the certified health counselor, and then we have the uh, advanced course where is the, is the practitioner and then doctorate level. So if you have any interest or anybody else, then we can contact them. But again, for your own, safe, own, own, own benefit, for family, for you on yourself and again, your friends, is important that we learn to use these herbs. One thing is that many of the individuals who have who are suffering from the from the hypertension, which is kind of a common disease here in the West or even though all over the world, with the high cholesterol, there are many people who are taking uh, Lipitor. Almost 70 million Americans are taking Lipitor. Uh, is the issue where the liver is not breaking down the fat. So we want to make sure that we strengthen the liver. We make the liver function optimum. So bitters are important. So dandelion is important. Kale is important. Spinach is important. Turn turnip green is important. Um, so basically all these green leafy vegetables are extremely important to maintain the liver health. We also want to make sure that our blood vessels are clean. So Gugulu actually is anti-inflammatory, also cleans the blood vessels. But again, on daily basis, if we are taking uh, celery is a great uh, kind of a rotor rooter, cleans the blood vessel. So celery, you can juice celery, three, four stack of gel or celery with half to one inch of ginger because ginger improves circulation. Uh, and if you want to add apple with it, green apple or carrot or beet, it's up to you. But these two must be there. So make sure that the circulation is good. You want to make sure that the blood pressure is not that high. We want to make sure the kidney function is also working or is, is, is optimum because celery was also helping the flushing the kidney. Um, so all these things are, are helpful. But with that, we also need to keep in mind, mind or body, a positive attitude, a, a, a sense of gratitude. Be thankful to what we have. Be thankful to that, you know, that whatever we have actually is plenty. And if from there we can help others, that'll be a great thing. So with that, I will stop. Any question you have, I'm here to answer. Uh, yes, we do have uh, one question so far. It was, if CRP has chronically been high, how does one determine the cause and then action? Basically, there are many tests available. So in generally, when you're looking at the, the body function, the, the, there are tests available. But this, again, when we look at the test, test is performed by the blood and blood is the second layer, second dhatu. So even though it gives some clue what, what the problem is, but we need to realize this is in the blood, it means in the entire body. So when that is happening, we always start from the gut. So, we, so again, in Ayurvedic medicine, we are not completely dependent upon the test. We're looking at the pulse and the tongue. So when we're doing the tongue analysis, someone who is trained into Ayurvedic medicine will find immediately where the problem is by looking at the tongue because tongue have different areas, especially something in the front of the tip, on the side, on the back. 
and looking at the inflammation and the discoloration or the coating or the crack in the tongue will tell where the problem is. And that's why Ayurvedic medicine is so deep and, and so useful dealing with the chronic disease. But regardless of anywhere else, we need to be start working with the digestive system because if the inflammation is in the systemic, then it has to start from the gut. If it's not systemic, then also need to start from the gut because whatever is consumed there, that is going to be distributed from the digestive system to different organs. So you always start from there. Thank you. That was the only question so far. Does anyone have any other questions? They can put them in the chat. Does anyone have any other questions for the doctor? No questions, but a, uh, this was great. Thank you. Oh, uh, one question. Was he saying that raw food is not good to eat? Absolutely. If you are not able to chew, then raw food is not good. Reason being, one thing is when we chew the food three, four, five times, quick bite, and then we swallow that, those chunks are going into the stomach. Only grinders are in the mouth. There's nothing inside the stomach to grind this food. So the chunks are not going to be absorbed properly. So when food is cooked, then it becomes tender and it, is, it mashes by itself as the prosthetic movement and mixing movement of the, of the uh, alimentary canal is working. And that will mash it and then the nutrients are ex extracted. That's one thing. Second thing is if it's cooked, also have heat. But when we put in the blender, even though it's raw, at least the paste is formed. And at that point, we can extract or body can extract the nutrient. So Ayurveda does not recommend raw food in a sense when we are chewing it and if we are not chewing properly. So as long as it's chewed well, it should be okay? If you're chewing well, it should be okay. But with that also need to keep in mind, it is not cold. And especially for cough individuals who are cold and sluggish or vata individuals are cold and dry. So in that case, when the person is already cold and they eat cooling, cooling raw food, uh, that becomes the issue. We need to be supporting the natural process of this body. We are made 98.6 degrees. So average temperature is 98.2 to 98.6. And if we are supporting our body, then we should add food, which is warm by nature. If not 98 degrees, at least 75 or some warm food where it will be easy for the body to adapt and absorb the food. But if we are putting something cold 40 degrees from salad bar or zero degrees from freezer, that's going to suck heat from us. And many individuals who have chronic disease, I can tell you, check your temperature, the temperature is low. So when you already have low temperature, either because of the chronic disease or maybe this is causing the chronic disease, and then you eat more cooling food, then of course this is something which is not going to help you in the journey of healing because enzymes and the hormones are released at specific temperature. If temperature is low, they won't be released out either. So people have indigestion bodies as not absorbing all the nutrients. So that is the reason. Uh, we have one other question. Uh, do you take Medicare or secondary insurance? In the state of New York, the natural medicine is not covered by any insurance at all, unfortunately. We have been trying in the state of New York for many, many years. And uh, I remember for almost 20 years now, nowhere close. So it is the, somehow the politics of the healthcare. Uh, but uh, insurance does not cover any natural medicine. Are there any more questions for the doctor? This has been great. Great, great information. Okay, I think uh, I think that's the end of it, the questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaushik. This was Thank you very much, pleasure. and hopefully I'll see you guys again. Yep. yep. And uh, the presentation has been recorded, so it will be put up onto the Warner Library's YouTube channel. And uh, so if anybody needs to revisit it at any point, it'll be there.
And thank you everyone for coming. And again, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.